Okay, they have a graves here. Okay, like let's just play a, a little bit of solo queue. Oh, what the fuck? saplings tree gang represent thank you guys so much for all the support you've given me over the last couple of months here we are approaching 1000 subscribers on youtube and i absolutely could not be happier i'm cooking up something special for the milestone so stay tuned right here mossy elder on youtube on twitch on instagram on twitter for all that crispy ivern content it's gonna be a pretty short video for you guys today because the number one counter to ivern is obviously Lumberjack Scion, and that's all you need to know. Okay, bye! Today, we're gonna be talking about the five most difficult jungle matchups for Ivern, in my personal opinion. Granted, I am an 800,000 point mastery Ivern who is in platinum at this exact moment, so you can take these picks with a grain of salt if you'd like, but in my experience, these are who I have the most trouble with based on win rate and based on a bunch of other criteria. This has been a highly requested video from you guys and I'm happy to share my thoughts on the matter. Um, now some of these picks might not be exactly what you guys are expecting, but I'll analyze them for you as best as I can as to why I think they're so difficult and try and give you some tips in the matchup to help you out in your own solo queue games. I won't be focusing as much on itemization and uh, things like that as season 11 is right around the corner and uh, we don't really know how that's going to shake out. But I'm quite confident that these picks are going to be just as difficult for Ivern in season 11 as they are in season 10. And the reason I say that is because all of these picks are very difficult because of how their kits function, not so much because of itemization. Now, before we start making our tier list, let's come up with some criteria in rating the junglers we're playing against who are gonna be facing us as Ivern. In my opinion, these are the most important factors when looking at the matchup. You have number one, invade potency slash early game pressure. How much pressure are they gonna be putting on you as Ivern? Are they gonna be running up to your buffs and just killing you on spawn? Are they going to be able to just be free to make your life very difficult while farming? Number two, what's their late game scaling potential and how's their farming proficiency? Are they massively better at farming than Ivern is with his passive? Are they going to be clearing their jungles so quickly and building up that item advantage? And are they going to be nightmares in the late game doing crazy, crazy damage? The third one is what's their 1v1 kill threat? What's their 1v1 kill potential on Ivern? And does Ivern have a window where he's able to burst them. Do we have a burst potential window with our abilities? Are we able to kill them in the 1v1? Are they just going to murder us in the 1v1? That's all taken into account here. Number four is what I like to call stickiness. Stickiness is how hard is it to get them off you? If you land a slow on them, if you land a stun on them, are you going to be able to run away if they invade you? Or are they just going to keep chasing you down and murdering you? And the last one, number five here, is playmaking potential slash objective control. How easy is it for you to sneak a dragon on them? Are you able to 50-50 objectives against them? Are they just going to be taking every objective on the map if your team loses prio? Those are all the things we need to consider when looking at different matchups against Ivern because Ivern is such a unique champion that all of those things play a huge role in how effective you can be helping your team win the game. Never fear though, even in the most impossible matchups, the best thing about Ivern is every matchup is winnable as long as you play it right. Some are infinitely harder than others, but there is always a chance for victory when you're playing Ivern. All right, now that we have our criteria, let's go ahead and make our tier list.
tier list complete, make sure we keep in the back of our minds the criteria when we're looking through where I've placed each champion on the list. I went with the categories from easiest to hardest. The very first one is Ivern Stomp, then we have Easy, then we have Even but Ivern Favored, we have Even but Enemy Snowball Potential, so those matchups get a little bit more difficult as we go up the tier list of course. Then we have the hard matchups and the impossible matchups. The impossible matchups is comprised of what I feel are the top five most difficult champions against Ivern. But you might notice Kane and Evelyn are down in the easy bucket at the very bottom of the chart. Why is this? Because with the right rune setup and the right jungle pressure, you can make those champions virtually useless as Ivern. Ivern has kill potential on both of those characters, and if you play the early game right, you'll be able to definitely win those matchups. If we keep moving up in the even but enemy snowball potential, you'll see champions like Olaf and Echo and Elise, where if you play the matchup wrong, the enemy's gonna run all over you. But if you play Ivern correctly, you're gonna be able to manipulate that matchup in such a way where it's actually going to work out in your favor towards the late game. The hard matchups and the impossible matchups are really the ones we gotta look at when it comes to what we should be banning and we really need to be careful with how we play the early games and the late games against those characters. Without further ado, let's jump into why I put Vully Bear as number five on our hardest jungle matchups for Ivan. Well, this might be a surprise pick for some. Vully Bear is very sticky. He's hard to get off of you. He scales very hard into the late game. He has a lot of kill potential on Ivern if he catches you out, and he's crazy tanky with tons of play making potential. His passive gives himself bonus attack speed for those 1v1s. He has insane chase down with his Q, basically giving him a free ghost. If he catches you and jumps on you, he's gonna stun you, and that gives him just free damage to follow up with his combo. But oh, that's not all folks, oh no. If you stun him with your root collar, which is your Q, his cooldown on his Q gets reset so he can just right away chase you down all over again it's absolutely insane this is basic this is a tank champion but he got the season 10 treatment in such a way where he can knock you out his frenzied maul applies a great deal of physical damage to you and Ivern doesn't spec armor or doesn't really want to spec armor, so it does crazy damage. If he does end up proccing that on you, he's able to heal off of hurting you as well as hurting Daisy. His E Sky Splitter, that thunderstorm thing that you guys always see, it gives him a crazy shield which scales on health. Everything this guy does scales on health, so he gets crazy tanky, and you're never able to 1v1 him. But if he hits you with it, it slows you for 40%, giving him just all the more ability to chase you down in the jungle and kill you. If you hide in a bush, that thing also grants vision. Riot, what are you doing with these abilities? Why do they have three different uses for one ability? Okay, if you guys thought that was bad, you guys just think about his ultimate, okay? At level six, he's gonna alt tower dive anyone in the game, get his team rolling on a crazy snowball. Even if you manage to stun him, even if you manage to stop his Q chase down, even if you manage to protect your backline for half of the team fight, at any time he can ult and jump on whoever he wants. But his ult also grants him speed and health and slows your own team. If that's not the stickiest character in the game, I don't know what is. Honestly, you might think this is a really strange inclusion on the list. However, I think he's a very, very good pick into Ivern. You cannot let this guy find you in the jungle. Ivern can never 1v1 him. He does way too much damage and he's way too tanky. Okay, so what can you do against Volibear to help you play the game? First thing I would suggest is make sure you track him very carefully. He's going to be looking for a huge gank at level 6 and you need to be there to counter gank it. If you let that gank go off, he's going to snowball like crazy. Second thing, don't let him scale. You have to push the tempo on him, figure out where he is and invade on the other side. Try and slow him down as much as you possibly can. Gank away from him and try and end the game before he scales out of control. If he ends up counter ganking you, it's going to be a wrap. So never gank if you know he's in the area. All right, that's our number five pick on the list. Let's jump over to number four. 
Okay, number four is gonna be Rengar. Now don't get all up in arms at me, I know you can beat a bad Rengar. His early clear leaves him low and he's counter gankable etc etc. We've all been in those games against that Rengar player who sees Ivern and decides, oh I counter bushes, why don't I just pick Rengar? But really he has no idea what he's doing. Okay, that's fine. However, a good Rengar is going to mess you up, okay? You better just unbind your W key when you play against this guy because it's gonna get ugly. This is what's known as a kit counter. A lot of the picks on this list are kit counters. You don't get to put a bush down in any lane because Rengar's gonna jump through it and kill your entire team. And your team's gonna blame you for it. Then they're gonna flame, then they're gonna surrender. Say goodbye to all your empowered auto attacks. I'd recommend only using your bushes for vision where there are other bushes so your team knows how to play around it. Most of your teammates are gonna lose their minds when they see a bush and they see a Rengar. Be careful putting down bushes around objectives like Dragon or Baron. It could cost your whole team the fight. If he gets snowballing, it's gonna be one shot city for the rest of your team on the rift, okay? He has crazy damage, he has empowered auto attacks, he has a built-in cleanse, he has a slow and a root if it's empowered, not to mention his ultimate, which we're all aware about and is gonna one-shot you. Okay, so what can you do to play against a good Rengar? Okay, we're only talking about the good Rengars here. Step one, unbind your W key. Don't even use it other than in other bushes, okay? Your team is gonna lose their minds. Two, make sure you play safe in the early game. He has crazy snowball potential and it's not gonna go well for you. Uh, number three, help your mid laner. If their mid laner has pressure, their mid and Rengar are gonna perma invade you the entire game. So make sure you keep your mid lane in an even state at the bare minimum. And step four, Zhonya's is your best friend. The only way that you can beat a Rengar is with Zhonya's. If the Rengar starts to snowball, if you're not winning the game, make sure you get an early Seeker's Arm Guard. It is possible for you to build Seeker's Arm Guard, then finish your Athenes, then go back and finish your Zhonya's. That is definitely viable. However, I would recommend if Rengar starts snowballing, just finish your Zhonya's as soon as possible. If he can't ult you and he tries to ult other people, it's going to be a lot easier for you to keep them alive. All right, Rengar was number four. Let's take a look at who's number three. At number three, we have the infamous Nunu, another one of Riot's brilliantly reworked champions. Man, this guy is so crazy. We all know about his chomp and his Q, but did you know his passive gives his teammates movement speed and attack speed? That is crazy for team fighting. Plus, he has insane durability, heals and shields galore. His Q can chomp Daisy, and that's probably the most annoying thing about him. His Q scales with health and AP, 50% extra when he's low health. It also does true damage against minions, and Daisy is of course coded as a minion. But if he does use it on a minion, he gets 25% more healing than he normally would have. Plus, if it's going to execute Daisy, it will stun her before executing her, which potentially could stop her from getting her third hit off and knocking Nunu up in a fight. If that's not good enough, his ult also grants a shield which scales 50% health from his bonus health and does insane damage. So he's incentivized to build AP and health, making him tanky and sticky. Not only is he incredibly durable, he's also very fast and can stun very, very easily. Low elo teammates have a very tough time tracking the jungler while laning effectively. So you gotta watch out because he can snowball from across the map and get a gank off very easily, turning the tides into the enemy's favor. He can chase you down, he can snowball barrage you which is gonna stun you, and all of his tanky builds, he's gonna kill you with his ult. Well, he has healing on his chomp which makes him very very hard to 1v1. Perhaps the most annoying thing about this is that his chomp is so powerful that you can never 50-50 an objective with Nunu around. Ivern's already not the greatest champion at doing objectives solo in the first place, but with Nunu around, it's absolutely a nightmare. Okay, so what can we do to play against Nunu? Well, we're gonna need to predict his snowball ganks and constantly ping him out for our teammates so they're aware of where he is at all times. We can use Daisy to tank the snowball. It's maybe not the best use of Daisy, but if it saves your teammates, it's worth it. AoE heal and shield items are gonna be our best friend against Nunu's ultimate and we never want to do an objective unless we have a man advantage and Nunu is either dead or locked down. 
Nunu is one of my personal least favorite champions to play against. I have an abysmal win rate against him, and I absolutely hate this champion when I'm playing Ivern. That's it for number three. Let's jump over to number two. At number two, we have a character with almost as cool of lore as Ivern. We have Kindred. And Kindred is very difficult because she's really powerful at invading in the early game and she scales out of this world. Plus, her ultimate can make team fights very hit or miss. Why is Kindred so strong? Well, with her passive, she's incentivized to invade you. And the number one way to beat an Ivern is to invade him. She can level two hop to invade your first buff that you're gonna smite away whether that's over the Baron Pit or the Dragon Pit. Ivern doesn't have time to mark one side and then go to the buff before she's already there taking it. She always has a dash up to dodge your Q, and when she has her wolf field around, her dodge is like on a two second cooldown. She's almost impossible to fight and she's really strong in the early levels. Her E actually slows Ivern Plus, it crits if you're at low health, giving her a semi-execute. The problem with her invade is if she ends up killing you on this invade, it's even worse for, mute for you than a normal champion, because she's gonna get gold, but she's also gonna get a mark, because she's guaranteed marked you with her passive. Her marks give her extra attack range, which makes it even easier for her on future invades to kill you. She also builds a lot of damage and critical strike, which makes her virtually impossible for you to 1v1. Maybe one of the hardest parts about fighting against Kindred is that in the late game she outscales you like crazy. There's not a lot of characters that outscale Ivern but she's definitely one of them. She can also escape Daisy very easily and her ultimate counters Daisy and CC. It's actually very frustrating to play against, especially around objectives and big team fights. So what can you do to play against Kindred? Well, you're gonna need to path opposite of Kindred in the early game. You do not wanna mess with her at a level three crab fight, okay? Plus, you might want to adjust your pathing and ward very early to see if she is invading. I would suggest placing your ward a little bit outside of the pixel brush so you can see the path into the dragon pit or into the baron pit. Another thing you want to do is smite away marks whenever you can and whenever it's safe to do so. Uh, one thing you can do with Kindred's ultimate is you can put two stacks of Daisy's auto attacks on a champion and just walk Daisy around microing her until the ultimate's over before you get that third stack on Daisy to get a big AoE knockup. Champions are probably going to bunch in Kindred ultimate so it is easy for you to get a Daisy knockup which might end up turning the fight into to your favor. Um, the other tip I can give to you is try and end the game as early as possible. Try and get your team an advantage. Don't let the game go too long. The longer the game goes, the more of an advantage Kindred has on you. Okay, that's our number two pick and honestly one of the most difficult champions for Ivern to play against. But let's move on to the granddaddy, the most impossible champion for Ivern. Honestly, the Dawn of the Jungle himself, he can do absolutely anything to destroy you in this game. And I am of course talking about our number one pick. All right, at number one, we have the granddaddy himself. We got Graves, all right? The longer this guy's in combat, the more tanky he gets. He has an insanely fast jungle clear. And Riot has made it such that they do not want you to be able to stay alive against this guy. Phase Rush makes him absolutely impossible to kite and to run away from. Plus, he has a dash that helps him dodge your Q, so you need to be very careful about when you throw it. Plus, that dash actually reloads his autos. But the most crazy thing about Phase Rush is it makes it so he doesn't need to take Flash, okay? So while he's perma invading you, he actually has Ignite to increase the kill pressure he has on you. And once he gets a kill or two on you, there's no stopping him. He scales so hard into the late game, he's absolutely gonna snowball. He's very good at invading. He's an amazing scaling character. And maybe the worst part about it 
is his auto attacks knock Daisy away from him. So you can never get a Daisy knock up on this guy. And in season 11, it only gets worse. With all of the crazy items he's going to be able to build, he's going to be invading you. He knocks Daisy back all the way to the moon and basically renders her useless. That is the absolute most impossible matchup, and I honestly don't have a lot of tips about how you can best play against it. The best I can give you is try and build a lot of movement speed and basically run away from him. Use a ton of wards, pink wards, trinkets, whatever. Buy the new ward stone, get the support item, do whatever you can to always have vision of this guy because if he catches you in the jungle, it's over. You should never be ganking when Graves is nearby, and you should only counter gank if you ever get caught ganking and he's nearby he's gonna clean up that fight and you're probably all gonna die i got really no other tips for you he's just way too good against ivern and until riot makes some changes that is 100 a permaban that's gonna bring us Close to the end of this video, I wanted to give you my top three bands that you should be using in solo queue to climb most effectively. Number one, ban Graves. If Graves is open and he gets picked and the player is even mildly competent, Graves is so easy that it's kind of doomed for you. Number two, I would ban Nunu. He has a pretty high play rate and you do not need to be very good at the game to be good at Nunu. Number three, probably third most priority for banning would be Lee Sin, okay? It's not because Lee Sin is better than the other picks in the top five, but it's because Lee Sin has one of the highest play rates across low elo solo queue. Everybody loves to think they're a Chad, Lee Sin, doing all the cool insect plays when really they don't have mechanics, but the way low elo works, it usually works out for him anyway because he gets an early game advantage when your team's not respecting his ganks. So those would be my top three bans for you. I know this video was a little bit longer, but when I'm trying to do an instructional video, I love to go into as much detail as I can possibly give you. That's the only way for new players or beginner Ivern players to really learn the ins and outs of the champion. So thank you so much for rocking with me today. I really hope you enjoyed it. I had a lot of fun making this tier list and uh thank you so much for all the subscriptions that we've been getting here on youtube if you do want to check out more ivern gameplay um i stream every monday wednesday friday on twitch at 7 p.m pst and you can go and check it out twitch.tv slash mossy elder uh, you can also follow me on all the socials and if you did appreciate this video uh, i'd love it if you could hit that sub button hit the bell so you don't miss any future uploads and i hope you guys have a sunny day sapling <laughs> Thanks for hanging out. Tree Gang for life. Bye. Have a good one. Oh, hello.